Hey guys, in this video we go over the key knowledge for exchange and transport parts for your Edexcel biology. This is a fantastic topic, but it's a bit complicated, so you need to pay attention. When we're talking about diffusion, we are talking about things moving from a high concentration down the diffusion gradient to an area of low concentration. This could be things moving from an area inside a cell where they've been made to another area, or it could be things moving out of a cell. For example, it could be um, happening in the lungs, so these are the alveoli, the air spaces, and this is the capillary travelling around it. These are very, very thin, uh, walls only one cell thick, and carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from the blood into the lungs so that it can be breathed out and oxygen is going to diffuse from the lungs into the blood so it can be taken around the body. All this can be in the gut, these are the villi of the gut, this is the gut cavity here and you notice again they are one cell thick and just like the alveoli they have a very large surface area. We're going to get digested food moving from the gut cavity into the blood so that it can be taken around the rest of the body. So diffusion is the movement of gases or any particles that dissolved in solution moving down a concentration gradient from a high concentration to an area of low concentration. Blood is made up of several components. The actual colour of blood is this pale yellow colour. This is the serum, that's the liquid component of the blood. The cells give it its actual colour. Red blood cells, the cells that give blood its colour, have no nuclei. And this is so they have more space to carry oxygen, which is their main function. White blood cells are part of the immune system and platelets are fragments of cells and they are important for things like clotting. Arteries have a very thick walls because they are carrying blood under high pressure which means they have a thin lumen, that's the gap in the middle. Capillaries are very, very small. They are only one cell thick, or very, very thin, I should say. They're only one cell thick. This is to allow for diffusion. They generally go around in this kind of like mesh network around things like the gut, around the villi in the gut, around the alveoli in the lungs, so they have a large surface area. The veins carry deoxygenated blood, they carry it back to the heart, so they have valves. And they have thin walls and a thick lumen because they're carrying blood under low pressure. Here we have our respiratory system. Air goes in through the mouth or the nose, down into the trachea, which is also known as the windpipe. Then into the bronchus, which is a branch of the trachea into the bronchioli, which is a branch of the bronchus, and into little grape or cauliflower-shaped alveoli. This is where gas exchange happens. And they have an incredibly large surface area. Your diaphragm moves up and down to bring air in and out. The heart pumps blood around the body. The intercostal muscles allow the rib cage to expand. And the ribs, the last part that makes up everything, protects the lungs. Here we have a cardiovascular system and it is a double system. The blood gets pumped from the heart to the lungs, goes back to the heart and then gets pumped around the rest of the body. If you see a picture of the heart, the first thing you do is write right and left on there. We have our vena cava where the blood enters. It goes into the right atrium down through a valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle it goes up and to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. It comes back into the heart via the pulmonary vein into the left atrium 
in to the left ventricle and then is pumped to the rest of the body via the aorta. If you want to check you have the path of blood right, then we need to be looking at capital letters. It goes through the vena cava, the atrium, the ventricle, then the artery, back through the vein, into the atrium, to the ventricle, and then the aorta. So it goes vena cava, atrium, ventricle, artery, vein, atrium, ventricle, aorta. V-A-V-A-V-A. -A -A. If you don't have that pattern, you've made a mistake somewhere. Other features of the heart that you need to know are here. These are valves. They will only allow blood to flow. And that this side has a much larger muscle than this side. The right side only needs to pump blood to the lungs, which aren't very far away. But this side has to pump blood to the rest of the body, a much longer distance. The majority of the time, veins carry deoxygenated blood apart from the pulmonary vein, which carries oxygenated blood back into the heart. And the majority of the time, um, arteries carry oxygenated blood apart from the pulmonary vein, which carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. If the heart isn't functioning properly, pacemakers, artificial pacemakers, can be introduced to help the heart keep time. Or if somebody has cardiovascular disease, then these tubes can get blocked up. For respiration, we are going to take glucose, add it to oxygen and come out with water and carbon dioxide. You need to know the symbols for these, so... Oxygen is O2, water, H2O, carbon dioxide, CO2, and glucose, C6, H12O6. This needs to be balanced, but it's a nice easy one. Six, six, six. You have to make sure your numbers are the right size and in the right place. So these ones need to be little numbers and these ones need to be big numbers. Respiration is an exothermic reaction, which means energy is given out. The best example we can see of respiration is Screaming Jelly Baby Demo, where we take potassium chlorate, that's our liquid oxygen, Add in our glucose, that's our jelly baby, and you can see the massive amount of energy that comes off it. Anaerobic means without oxygen. So for anaerobic respiration, we take glucose and we turn it into energy and lactic acid. Not as much energy as aerobic respiration. Because the glucose isn't fully broken down. The lactic acid is going to build up in muscles causing an oxygen debt. This build up is going to be quite painful so you'll get it when you're doing things like sprinting um, or when you run out of oxygen. So after you've finished um, sprinting, after you've finished wanting to get rid of this oxygen debt, you're going to need to breathe really, really hard. That's why you, you, you pant, you keep breathing hard after you're running to pay back this oxygen debt, to get the blood flowing, to remove the lactic acid from your muscles. Anaerobic respiration can also take place in yeast. So yeast will take the glucose and we'll convert it into carbon dioxide 
and ethanol. Ethanol is used in drinks and cleaning products. And carbon dioxide is used for a variety of things. But when we talk about uh, in context of yeast, that is what's going to make your cakes or your bread rise.